Hi, my name is Shutik, and I'm an interior decorator for your ears. Today, we're going to take a look at this, the Strymon Dig V2. The Dig is a dual-line digital delay that offers up big, bright delay sounds with a solid set of features you can use to customize your sound. Instead of riding the hype train, I've been working with this pedal for the past several months to gain a real understanding of where it excels and where it comes up short. In doing so, I was able to identify a few obvious bugs in the MIDI functionality of the dig that have been present since the pedal was released. None of the gear channels who made dig videos for launch day said anything about these issues. It's almost like they willfully glossed over the problems. Hot take, right? Not really. When a company sends someone free stuff or pays them to make a video and that creator goes and makes a video saying negative things, it might stop consumers from consuming. If this happens, the company is going to end their relationship with that channel. Now that channel is left without a revenue stream or a source of free gear to create content with. This puts these channels in a precarious situation. They can either lie and omit issues they've discovered while making their videos, or choose to only review gear when they only have positive things to say about it. Either way, this prevents open discourse about gear that falls short of expectations. It also prevents bugs or flaws from coming to light and leaves the rest of us to struggle balls and wonder if it's only us experiencing these problems. Good news is, that's not the case over here on the Shootique channel. I've paid for everything out of my own pocket and I refuse to be compromised. We'll be covering each of these bugs in graphic detail today. As we walk through our overview of the Dig V2, I want you to ask yourself why. Why are you buying this? Do you plan on playing live or using it for recording? Do you actually need MIDI features? Are you sure you want a bright, cheerful delay and not a darker, more moody one? Answering these questions before you purchase any delay pedal will ensure you turn your hard-earned cash into something you'll actually use. The last thing any of us needs is another $400 aluminum and silicone paperweight. To start, let's highlight the major differences between the V1 and the V2. The most obvious change is that you get an added knob which gives you access to the tone control. All parameters can be controlled via MIDI, including the ability to save presets. You can also toggle between mono and stereo input using a switch on the back of the pedal without having to open the pedal up with a screwdriver like the Dig V1. You need a special cable for that. Finally, marketing for the V2 boasts that the Premium analog JFET input circuit ensures superb responsiveness to your playing. Sure, whatever. What I can say is that the dig doesn't have a negative impact on my signal chain. If none of these features matter to you, you can still purchase the V1 for roughly $100 less on Reverb. The controls are both intuitive and frustrating. They're intuitive because most controls behave exactly as you would anticipate. They're frustrating because there's an entire set of controls called live edit functions, which are accessed by holding down the on switch and manipulating the knobs and toggles of the pedal. If you make changes to the live edit functions, you'll have no quick way of seeing where these settings are dialed into. Changing the live edit settings will also make it unclear where the primary controls are set on the pedal. For example, say you wanna put the pedal into ping pong delay mode. In order to do this, you push the on button and turn the mix two knob to the 12 o'clock position where the on LED will change to amber. Now you're left without a clear indication of where the mix two knob was set to begin with. I know that it would clutter the face of the dig, but not having the live edit functions labeled on the face of the pedal makes me less inclined to use them. It would be nice if there was an option for an overlay that could be applied to the pedal. The pedal offers full control over all parameters via MIDI. I've been using a Morningstar MC8 as a glorified preset box. What I enjoy the most is being able to sync the dig to my DAW's MIDI clock. Let's go over the steps to set this up in Studio One. First, make sure your dig is plugged into the 9 volt power supply and connected via USB-C to your computer. Next, you're going to want to set it to respond to MIDI clock. Do this by holding down the on switch to engage live edit mode, and then flip the type toggle to the 24 slash 96 position. Now in Studio One, go to Preferences, External Devices, and select Add. From here, select a new instrument. 
You can name it whatever you want. In the Send To box, select Dig. Now, check the box next to Send MIDI Clock. Select OK and you're good to go. The Dig will now respond to the MIDI clock coming from Studio One. Just remember that the clock will only be sent to Dig when Studio One is actively playing or recording. You'll know it's working when the LEDs turn pink. Now that I'm all synced up, let's try something using the dotted quarter note setting. All the songs in today's video were recorded with my Choreatone British Style 18 watt running through my UA aux using a Greenback Speaker Impulse Response. Now, let's talk about the bugs. The following issues are present as of the beginning of May 2023. Getting the MIDI to work properly took me quite a bit of time. Here's an issue that I ran into right out of the gate. When the dig is receiving a MIDI tempo signal, the time knob will act as a multiplier, with noon being one times the tempo, and all the way to the right being one quarter times. So far, things are working as expected. So you're in this mode providing the dig with a tempo and then you save your current settings to a preset. If you recall that preset, the dig will save the tempo but default to the one quarter times multiplier. This makes the delay time super slow. It genuinely took me hours to realize this was what was happening. I kept thinking that it wasn't saving the new tempo sent from my DAW. The second bug I found is the one that makes me doubt the credibility of several prominent YouTube gear channels. If you use your MIDI controller to send a tap tempo signal to the dig using control change 12 as outlined in the manual, dig will stop sending signal. If you push the on button to bypass the dig, it will pass signal again. The dig pedal will not pass signal in the on position until you unplug its power supply and plug it back in again. Other gear channels have glossed over this issue by tapping the tempo into their MIDI controller and then sending that tempo to the dig. So what do you do to get around these issues? Well, there's an updated firmware version 1.12 which corrects these issues, but the only way to get a hold of it is to directly contact Strymon. The Strymon update application doesn't provide this update on its own. I contacted Strymon support and I was told the following. The hotfix for these issues was first made available roughly two months after the DIG V2 launched. The hotfix has not passed Strymon's QA process. New units are shipping with the 1.11 version. This means that if you buy a new DIG, it will have these MIDI bugs and you'll need to contact Strymon for the update. Lastly, installing this update will wipe out all of your presets. On another note, there's no compatibility with the Strymon Nixie preset editor yet, so I can't share or back up any of my presets. Strymon has stated that they will be updating the pedal firmware in Nixie software to enable this feature, but there is no planned date for this. 
My understanding is that installing the Nixie compatibility update will also erase your presets. The reason I'm bent out of shape by this is because I spent hours trying to figure out what I was doing wrong when it was the pedal itself which had issues. It's great that there's an update which addresses these problems, but it's not great that users will only learn about it once they've encountered and wrestled with these bugs. I'll update the notes in this video once the update fixing these MIDI issues is made available via the Strymon update software. I have psychotic tendencies, so I take apart all of my gear as soon as I get it. There isn't a whole lot to see inside this one, but there was one thing worth mentioning. When you open up the pedal, you're greeted by this abomination. I'm not sure if this is an old Strymon logo or what. So, what do I think about the Strymon Dig V2? Well, the pedal offers up some solid bright delay sounds, and the dual delay aspect certainly makes it a unique piece of gear. I find that I enjoy it the most as a platform for generating new ideas. If you're playing live, especially with a MIDI setup, the Strymon Dig might be the pedal for you. It definitely sounds good. For my purposes, I would prefer the Dig in plug-in format. This would make it significantly easier to put together songs. When you're recording and comping together takes from layers, keep in mind that you'll need to edit in a way that accounts for both the mistake and the repeat of the mistake that comes afterwards. It took me a bit to grasp this concept as I was editing the music for this video. If the dig were being used as a plugin, you would be editing the original dry take and you wouldn't have to consider this in your editing workflow. There's a free plugin by Kiloheart called Dual Delay that does a great job with the whole dig thing. Check that one out if you want to dip your toes without spending any cash. When it comes to the MIDI issues, I'm bummed that they aren't being addressed with transparency. The fact that the pedal is being shipped with buggy firmware when there is an update available is very frustrating. These days, I'm recording and not playing live, and for that purpose, I do not recommend the Strymon Dig. It's just been way too much of a pain in the ass. I was originally going to make three songs for this video, but working with the Dig just stopped being fun, so I had to call it at two. It's unlikely the Dig will get much future use from me. It's not all for nothing, though. The power supply that shipped with the unit is top shelf and gets a ton of use with other pedals with high current demand. I give the Strymon Dig V2 a bill for the three hours of my life that I wasted thinking I was a hopeless moron when in reality I was just dealing with a buggy product. 